Okay, hello, I'm Kevin Flanagan of the Peer to Peer Foundation. I'm here today at a unique place, the Clock Jordan Eco Village in Tipperary, Ireland, with Ben Whelan to learn more about the We Create, we Create the recently opened Fab Lab. Uh, ben, for those that might be unfamiliar with the concept, what is a Fab Lab? So, the Fab Labs were started in uh, MIT uh, in Boston um, by a professor called Neil Gershenfeld, uh, and he invented uh, a concept which was designed around a course called How to Make Almost Anything. Uh, and that course was opened up to, to students at the university and he found that, surprisingly, it wasn't just technological and engineering students that came to this class, but uh, artists, craftspeople, uh, people from literature and the arts were coming to the courses. So this is very inspiring to him and, uh, and people within the, uh, the organisation uh, at uh, MIT and the Centre of Bits and Atoms basically created a fab lab network where these machines were put into uh, places around the world, different communities and uh, towns and cities. Okay, so um, who is it for and what services do you hope to offer here? Well, um, the main thing about fab labs is it has a, a suite of equipment that are similar in uh, all the fab labs around the world. So this allows people to share designs and share ideas uh, by using the internet as a repository where people can download uh, designs made elsewhere in other fab labs. So the great thing about it is it's all computer numerical control machines, CNC machines, uh, and they are all uh, able to print out the same files. So this allows people to uh, innovate around the world and share their ideas. Um, the type of people who might use, like the equipment itself is not uh, all uh, brand new, a lot of this stuff has been in industry for years and years, the big changes is the price has come down a lot, uh, quality has gone up um, and then new things have come uh, on stream such as 3D printing like this uh, 3D printer here beside me which is a uh, open source machine. So there's a number of uh, new open source machines mixed with old uh, industrial machines that have been upgraded to a, a digital uh, framework. Um, so we see here, I suppose, that one of the main interests may come from people wanting to uh, prototype a business idea, a product design or something like that. Uh, we also see an interest from uh, an education point of view, from uh, schools, um, universities, and um, also kind of a, uh, like a business boot camp around these uh, new ideas around digital fabrication and um, uh, digital manufacturing. Uh, so we hope to appeal to those uh, relatively different audiences um, and we see this as something that's interest to all ages and uh, probably all professions also. Okay. Um, so the Peer-to-Peer -peer Foundation research and promote projects and communities that participate in peer-to-peer -peer production of commons, uh, open resources, collaborative practices, participatory governance. Um, we certainly see the Fab Lab movement as part of that emerging peer-to-peer -peer paradigm. How do you see we create as an incubator for this kind of open innovation? Uh, well, we, a couple of things. One is that we are, um, first of all, purchasing a, a mixture of open source equipment and uh, uh, proprietary equipment. Some of the proprietary equipment is much more evolved. Uh, it's better maybe out of the box and allows us to kick off this, this business activity um, relatively quickly and easily. But uh, alongside that, we're um, very interested in developing um, a model for an open source fab lab that would um, have open source laser cutters, open source CNC machines, open source 3D printers. Um, and being involved with that, um, open hardware uh, creation and potentially down the line uh, design and um, we see open source as being the key to uh, successful fab labs. Uh, the network itself uh, encourages sharing, it encourages uh, creative commons licenses, it encourages uh, openness of ideas. Um, so we'd feel that the fab lab and the network of the fab lab uh, is quite similar to other networks that have uh, the commons and decentralization, I suppose, as their main uh, focus and theme. Okay. Um so we create is located in Clock Jordan Eco Village. It's quite a unique location. How does the fab, uh, the fab lab fit in with the overall ethos of the Eco Village? Well, the Eco Village is um, very focused on sustainability and, and resilience, uh, the resilience of local communities and, and local neighbourhoods. So we uh, at the Eco Village have put a lot of effort into. 
creating a, a ecological settlement, uh, including ecological drainage systems, ecological building, um, and we also have a renewable um, heat system, a district heating system. Uh, on top of that, there's a, a now a new layer of kind of community supported agriculture where we're producing our own food. Um, and as a cooperative uh, group of members, we uh, support the farming activities here and we uh, get a, um, a distribution, a share of the, of the produce. Uh, for me, the, the next layer and for we create um, is um, about local manufacturing. It's about challenging that idea of mass consumption and looking more at uh, bespoke and uh, designing for people's needs rather than you know, uh, consumption as, a, as the basic model. So here in the Fab Lab we can see that we can support the concept of local manufacturing, which is a key element of uh, resilience. Um, and we feel that the Fab Lab, it's a digital based um, uh, suite of equipment, but we, we feel that we can interact with the local community who have maybe more traditional um, facilities available. For instance, the local forge who could uh, help us in, in casting metal when we uh, can create moulds here on our, on our 3D printers. Uh, so that type of thing, building up the greater resilience of the community through uh, local manufacturing and the concept maybe of community supported manufacturing could even be uh, talked about in relation to this, where you may have people who would support this, the existence of a facility such as a micro factory or um, a space such as we create, a workspace such as we create that could help them, their, uh, the community in its uh, resilience into the long term. Okay. Um, uh, does we create aim to bring that uh, kind of ecological ethos to the Fab Lab movement? Oh, well, absolutely, we're in, well. Uh, we're very interested in, in such things as feedstocks or three D printers. Whether you could do that as a uh, maybe a more uh, bio based plastic that could be possibly grown and processed in local communities. Um, we're interested in a, a open source uh, hardware that can support agriculture. Uh, so we're looking a lot at um, concepts around the Arduino uh, as a, a sensor and control uh, computing, embedded computing device that could help us uh, monitor and maybe make uh, undercover agriculture more, more efficient. Um, uh, and on top of that, I suppose we, we want to um, really look at the whole notion of re repairing, the right idea of a repair culture, where people aren't just... Um, instantly throwing things out when the new model comes along that the fab lab in some respects could help uh, uh, people to to fix things um, and repair things that, yeah. that, that it's not so easy to do at the moment um, uh, do you have relationships with other fab labs uh, not as yet but we're we are we have joined the fab lab network um, and Anthony my um, uh, business partner is on the fab lab uh, association um, we have uh, visited some fab labs and uh, recently was one uh, in one in Portugal in Lisbon, uh, fab lab at EDP in, in Lisbon uh, and we, we talked there about meeting up in Barcelona because there's a world uh, fab lab uh, conference and convention in Barcelona next July, in July 2014. So that's an opportunity where you can meet the, the network of fab labs, uh, it, I believe it's over 150 now at this stage. Uh, all around the world in different communities um, and they gather once a year and, and Barcelona is this year's event. Okay, great. Um, so you've only launched and it's, it's early days but uh, I have to ask you, what are your visions for the future uh, for re we create for Fab Labs in Ireland and uh, internationally? Um, well, Ireland, uh, this we create is a, is a business running out of um, a community enterprise centre. And there's a community enterprise centre network around the country, which were all funded by Enterprise Ireland. And um, those enterprise centres, some of them are struggling to fill, uh, be filled with tenants. And we, we feel that offering a kind of a mixture of, of co-working, which is kind of a shared office space, a collaborative working space, um, which supports the idea of, of people working together and coming to uh, maybe a better result than if they just work, uh, work alone or in isolation. Uh, if you could marry up that co-working concept with the Fab Lab concept, which has a, a much wider range of tools than a typical co-working environment would, which you would usually just share a printer or a photocopier or something. Um, 
uh, you maybe have a shared suite of digital equipment that would allow you to conceive of your idea and uh, maybe bring it to the early stages of development. Um, so we could see that fab labs and co-working spaces could effectively uh, retrofit some of the, the concept around enterprise centres in, in Ireland. Um, and uh, I think we'd like to see um, uh, fab labs and fab lab type equipment. You don't necessarily have to have all the equipment, maybe it's just one or two, uh, two examples. These things could be dropped into local communities all, uh, all over the country and the world eventually, and then you'd have a decentralised approach to uh, manufacturing for people's needs where they are. Mm. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for taking the time uh, to speak with us today. Thanks, and uh, best of luck with everything. Yeah. Cheers. Okay. <laughs>